Are you a professional pillow fighter? Or a 9 to 5 low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Hey everyone, welcome to Kill Me Now with Judy Gold. I'm Judy Gold and I'm here with my son, Ben. Ben Callahan Gold. We have a lot to talk about today. And I wanted to just bring up that I can't stand Clarence Thomas and Marjorie Taylor Greene again dissing New York City. Don't come here and talk shit about my city when you're a dumb fucking idiot. Thank you for all your comments regarding my rant last week. I was so annoyed. But I asked my son, Ben. Now, Ben plays college basketball, as you know, because I talk about my kids all the time. And as you know, I'm very, very proud of my son, Ben. I wanted to ask Ben. Now, Ben is the captain, one of the captains of the Trinity Bantams, uh, Trinity College in Hertford, Connecticut. He played a year at Tulane during the pandemic and then transferred to Trinity College and will probably play uh, after college. He's knocking on the wood. So the reason I wanted Ben here is because I wanted to talk to him about the WNBA finals, which has gotten a lot. Oh, Ben, let me just say Ben uh, gets a lot of has been. NCAA women's finals. What did I say? WNBA. Right. So the the NCAA women's basketball. First of all, I know you're friends with some of the people, uh, women on the trinity female basketball right Mm -hmm. but you're not a big fan i mean even though i took you to WNBA games you're not a big fan of women's basketball are you um i'd say i'm a bigger fan of women's college basketball than the WNBA. why just doesn't get as much exposure and also like a lot of the schools i follow are like you know even at nmh like my boarding school i had teammates or sorry not teammates people on the women's team who now play in college so I, I just have a, a closer connection to it in the WNBA. But do you think as you get older and you know the WNBA players, you'll be more into it? Um, I don't know. I think it's – I'm just more interested in women's college basketball than the WNBA. Okay. What do you think is the difference between women's – the way women play basketball and the way men play basketball? I have a, I have a theory. I mean, I don't know if it's a theory as much as like – Men's basketball is just a faster pace with people who jump higher and run faster. So it's literally a different game because not a different game, a different style of play because um, it's just. Do you think there's more assists in a a women's basketball game than a I think that that is something that you could look up and find out. I don't know. Nasty. A, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, people. Of, the NBA in the last 10, 15 years, 20 years, the points per game has gone up like right. exponentially because of the amount of possessions that are happening in a game because the pace is so much faster because people are shooting more threes and whatever. Um, so that could be a reason why there are more assists. Because just there's more points being scored, so there's. You know, I just there's also like, think it's but. more of a group effort. Okay, so we let's talk about LSU versus Iowa. Iowa. So, did you watch that game? I watched part of it, but I watched like this is the answers. These are the answers I get. Like, it's never. Did you watch the game? It's a yes or no answer. Not, I didn't watch the whole game, but you watched some of it. Yeah, I watched most of the game. Can you talk closer? I watched to the most of the game, but I watched. I followed Iowa through the tournament because Caitlin Clark was getting a lot of um, 
media attention. And you like Caitlin Clark? Uh, I like the story. Like, What's the story? She had one of the best college basketball yeah. seasons for a man or woman ever. She scored the most points in a March Madness tournament. She had a buzzer beater. She, Her team beat the, I think they were 36-0, and 0, South Carolina in the Final Four. Yeah, she just... Yeah, she if you out. played against Caitlin Clark, who one on one, me and my teammates had this argument. Really? Yeah, we, we had when when it was happening, and it's important to note that one on one, like when my teammates and I play one on one, we aren't like, you know, you check the ball and you just dribble a bunch of times until you score. It's three dribbles, and there's like there's other ways to do it. You could do five seconds, whatever. There's it's just not like before limited. you can shoot before yeah, like you, you can have shoot. to shoot at the end of you can't take more than three dribbles or there's a five second timer. Like right. Someone else who's coming on next will be like five, four, whatever. So I think I'm just too physically big. Like, yeah, she's probably five, ten to six foot. Right. You know, one hundred sixty pounds, maybe right. like maximum. And I'm two twenty. Like I just phys- I don't think if and I was six, running, yeah. I just think if I was running towards the basket with all my force, I don't know how she'd physically be able to stop me. On the other hand, I wouldn't be able to guard her. Right. Right. So I think it's just a matter of who gets ball for. Like I don't know. I think it'd be a really good game, and I would. Oh, so it. you're admitting she would be competitive? Absolutely. Wow, that's yeah. very big of you. Um, do you remember when I used to beat you at one on one when you were like four? Uh, I don't think your functional memory starts until around then, so probably not. Okay, nasty. Okay, so I often ask you, because I don't know if people are aware that sometimes I get a little upset during your games. Like, the the on um, the people who are watching are so nasty at these college games. Like, I know there's taunting on the court which is separate that from the taunting from the crowd correct or so when you're talk do you talk shit on the court and that's question number 1 like are are the other teams what, what do they say to you like i know there's i don't know it depends on the the context the game who you're playing against um some games mean more than others like for example we, my conference, you play your conference teams every year and then you play those teams in the in the playoffs before like the national tournament. Last year, for example, I had a really good game against Tufts in the- Oh, uh, that was such a good game. In the quarterfinals. And then, you know, very intense, whatever. We ended up beating them and knocking them out of the playoffs when they were like the two seed and we were the seven seed. And then this year we play them in the regular season- Some games just mean more because, you know, you got eliminated. We eliminated you. You want to get us back. Right. right? So they beat us by like 15 this year. So that's just an example of how, you know, some games mean more than others. So like. Okay. So what's 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 the worst thing someone said to you on the court? On the court? Yeah. It's, It's not like the worst. It's just like they'll be like, you suck or I'd say 95% of the time it's all in you know the spirit of the game and also a lot of the game i'm so locked in on what's going on that like i don't even remember what right. happened after right like half the time i celebrate after a three it's just reaction because i'm into the game i'm not like right oh, i'm gonna do this after i hit my next three you know what I right mean? but there are times i've watched you where you're they're being assholes and then you hit a three you sink a three well, like, and you're like you, where you do yeah. three to them mm-hmm. to their bench yeah, I mean, like, sometimes, you know, if I get scored on, right? Yeah. Then, and I'm taking the ball out, and someone on their bench yells something to me. Like, I don't know what, but, like, yeah. something. Like, oh, he's little. Like, keep giving the other guy the ball. Whatever, right? And I go down, and I hit a three, and I just say something back to their bench. I'm like, I don't know. D- you were taunted, too, after you transferred from D1 to D3. Don't you think they... Th- Not, uh, yeah, I guess so. People like to be, like... uh the crowd likes to do that more than on the crowd. Right. Oh, that's, and it's, that's why I get so pissed off. So one time you were playing, I think, Williams College. I think it was Tufts. With the haircut thing, the barber thing. Oh, no. That's, oh, I'll tell that story. It's not a good story. But yeah, continue. Okay, shut up. And they were yelling shit. You have a teammate named Gil, who I love. He's adorable. And we had Thanksgiving with him. He's a lovely boy. 
and and these people were yelling shit to him about his parents, like they had looked. Yeah, I mean that's like he said it really upset him. Yeah. How is like, that? How is that okay? I mean, that's just what happened. Like that's what happens. Like look at the NBA. Like there's, you know, every other week now you're seeing a fan get. Um, kicked out of the stadium because right. they're saying something to a player and the player now responds. And I don't know. It's just a part of the game. Like you got to figure Hang out it. how to. It's like hockey when they it. beat the shit out of each other. Nope. Okay. Everything mm. I say is negative. Everything. It's just not. Okay. So even close to this Angel thing. Reese. Yeah. She, so the way it goes is that they were doing this thing where they point to the ring Do finger. You explain. Okay. We're going to have Ben explain. Apparently I'm an idiot. Go. Do you want me to explain the whole Caitlin Clark Angel Reese situation? I yeah, but I'm gonna ask you questions. Okay, but I'm just gonna give the thing. Okay. Right. So how I see it is that there were a couple phases or progressions that happened to get to this where it's at today. So Caitlin Clark was killing it in the tournament, whatever. She would celebrate, right, in the semifinal, in the final four, in the Elite Eight, right? There would be viral videos of her like hitting a three or and and celebrating like she do the Get John Cena you know, where you like do this right. What is this thing you where can't you go? See me. I don't know. It's it's this it's thing you put your hand over yes. your face. John Cena did it in the WWE. It's like a whatever. It's a thing that people do, and how I viewed it at least was during that time when she did it. It would be like throughout the course of the game after she right. had a three after you know her team started doing well whatever right, and everyone was very it was going viral like people were loving it. And that she was putting her hand over her this, face. And like there was also a video when they played South Carolina, who was undefeated. She was guarding someone, you know, 15 feet away from her because of the, the their team scouting report was that that girl couldn't shoot. Right. Right. So she's guarding her, guarding one of the really big girls. And there's a clip of her. Right. Literally, like she's in the paint and the other girls at the three point line. And she's like waves her off like she goes like this to her. Right. Like we don't we're not worried about you. Right. That is probably the most disrespectful Caitlin Clark got throughout all of that. But, you know, at least in my experience, that's something that happens throughout the course of the game. Like, she's in the final four. She's going up against an undefeated team. I'm sure she has a lot of adrenaline going. Right. Like, she's like, I, I don't know. Right? So that was the first thing. Caitlin Clark started Okay, would you consider having, me a big girl on the court? No. These girls are like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But in 19... And athletic. Eight. Okay. Um, <gasps> O they, M. Okay. Go ahead. So the first progression Nasty. was that Caitlin Clark was doing all the celebrating, and people were really supporting it. They loved it, right? So now it's the final. It's the um, championship, and LSU's playing Caitlin Clark in Iowa, and at the end of the game, Angel Reese is a player on LSU, one of their best players. After they were up by like 10, 15 with like a minute and a half left, they knew they were going to win. She was like following Caitlin Clark around on the court, doing the same sort of celebrations, whatever, right? So then after that game, she started getting backlash about how she was doing those celebrations that Caitlin Clark was doing, whatever, right? That's the second progression was that she was getting backlash for doing the same. Angel was getting Angel backlash. Was getting and backlash it, for doing the celebrations at the end of the game after they already won to Well, her, okay. Right? Can I just finish? The yeah, I just, all right. And then I I'm have a question done. about that. Third progression is that people were then getting mad at Angel Reese for doing that, right? Fourth progression is that people were then saying that the people who are getting mad at Angel Reese for doing that are only getting mad because she's black. She right. was doing the same thing that Caitlin Clark was doing. Why would you be mad at Angel Reese and not mad at Caitlin Clark right. if they're doing the same thing, right? And then the fifth progression was people responding to them and saying how it's different to follow someone after, you know, in the national championship, you're up by 15, you know you're going to win, you know, following her around, pointing to your ring finger because you're about to get, you know, the ring, doing the same celebration she was. You know, it wasn't in the course of the game where, point being, people were saying it was more of a taunting thing than like a celebration Thing like clean, right, it was clean, more negative, like yeah. Um, so that's the situation. Okay, here's the thing. So, you know, the the fact is that Angel was doing it after they already knew they won. Mm. Does that, and was following her around the court. Does that mean, does that, do you think that's any different than what 
Caitlin did. Yeah, I think me, for example, I love, like, after I hit a three, my instinct is to, you know, flex or do the three thing, like she said, and yeah. whatever. Like, I just You have, do the straight arm thing. Yeah, I just yeah. have reactions that I do naturally because I'm right. so into the game and right. the score, and it's like, oh. And you're in you the know. zone. Yeah, exactly. So that's, obviously, I don't know either of their intentions, so I'm just speaking from how I viewed it, but how I see it is, like, Caitlin Clark was sort of doing what I would do where it's like, oh, I hit a three, I'm going to celebrate. Right. My teammate hit a three, you know, we went up by 10. The right. other team called a timeout. I'm celebrating, right? To follow someone around after you win, especially in a championship game like that, when you know their season's over, you know they worked this hard to get here and they're not going to win the championship. Like because being second place is very, it's probably harder than being third or fourth right. because it's like you were this close, right? So in my opinion, at least, if Angel Reese did that, you know, if she, you know, made a and one layup on Caitlin Clark and then was like this, like, or flexed on her, that's completely normal. I think that happens right. every single day in an NBA game when someone gets dunked on, right? Right. But I do see what people are saying where there is a worse or a, a lower level of sportsmanship to sort of follow her around and um, sort of rub it in. Okay. So I read a bunch of articles about this. So... Uh, I read that Jill Biden mm -hmm. was there and she wanted to, you know, go into the LSU and give them a pep talk and the Iowa teams locker rooms before the game to give them a pep talk. And they that LSU didn't want her there. Are you positive that that's what happened? I mean, that's because a, an what, article I read. I mean, uh, so my question is what, the Jill Biden situation that I heard is that. Yeah. Jill Biden. No, this is this is inviting them. Invite yeah, that's a I different know, story. Would do you welcome other people coming in before? Like, wouldn't you find that to be distracting? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Can you I get closer? Want, I wouldn't want like I don't know. We have a very routine way that we do things before games, right? Right. So like, you know, we get there, we get into our stuff, we go through our walkthrough, whatever. You know, when there's 35 minutes on the clock, we go in and have our talk with our coach. When there's 20 minutes, we go right. whatever. Whatever we do, we do it every time. So to have someone there, you don't know how long they're going to talk for. You don't know what they're going to say. You don't know if what, they're say, what, if what they say necessarily aligns with your culture and right. the beliefs that your team carries. And especially, you know, before the national championship, I don't know, why would you change anything? But it's also, yeah. Anything. And I mean, I know from, talk, I don't know if you know I'm a performer. after the game. Right. I'm a performer. I don't want to talk to anyone before the game. I want to do my usual routine. It's funny because, you know, I was telling you that Samantha and them, Samantha wants to come into the. That's his girlfriend. She wants to come into your. Dressing room. After the show. Yeah. She thought I meant before the show. And she was like, wouldn't Judy, like, is she not going to be like stressed out about whatever? And I was like, oh, you thought I meant before the show? I would never go into her. Right. Thing. Yeah. My she manager, Rick, um, also the opening night. He's like, I'm not, I'll am not. i see you after the show. He texted me that day because I know you like to be alone before. I mean, yeah. you just got, just you got to focus. Yeah. Like you got to lock. Yeah, exactly. Lock in, baby. I'm a cool mom. Whatever. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with a name your price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Jill Biden invites them to the White House, which is a common thing for, these, for the champions. But she also wants to invite the losing team. Because of Caitlin Clark. Because Caitlin Clark was, would that piss you off if you were the winning team? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know. I think it's like a, it's an honor that you get to win the championship. And like, it's it's for, I don't know if it's for like baseball and like football and stuff. Yeah. But I know like the NBA champion goes to the White House every right. year. And like, I don't know. I don't think. And also. Um, I don't think it's Jill Biden's place to invite another team. It's right. sort of like the tradition of what happens. It's well, not she, like, yeah, she's being like a mother, like, yeah. oh, we'll both come. Yeah. And this is what's and wrong. About, yeah, it's not about 
it's make also feel good. right. Like you lost. I you feel like this about thing. safe space. It's like yeah. I feel like this about everyone getting a trophy. It's like you don't. Everyone doesn't get real life. Is not everyone getting a trophy? Also, like she didn't invite San Diego State. Uh, right, the loser of the men's tournament. Right, right? like who, who yeah. cares? They lost. They don't get to go. That's how. Do it you works. think um, Angel Reese is getting a ton of more shit because she's black? Um, yeah, I yeah, think, I do too. I think if she was white and the situation was happening, it would be the sort of thing where they would post it and people would be like, "Oh, like she was talking shit," and it'd be over with. Right. Whereas because she's black, right, people in the first place, made a bigger deal out of it. Right. And then because there was such a big deal out of it, people responded being like, it's right. they all, black. And social became, media. Oh, yeah, it becomes a bigger whole. situation. Do you think there's racism, racism in college basketball? I don't know. I've never really thought about it, but. I mean, you're white, so. College basketball. Yeah. Or basketball in general is a predominantly black sport. Right. So. I don't know if there would be if you mean racism. It, like, I mean it, it, on it, the court within teammates. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. There have been cases relatively frequently of coaches using, you know, referencing slavery and whipping and oh, that's not that good. sort of thing, and they get fired. Like, right, but that I'm sure that there's aren't the I'm most sure some people. Yeah, absolutely. What about are there more white coaches than there are black coaches in college basketball? I don't know. There's. Okay. 700 college teams. Have you experienced uh, anti-Semitism on the court? Um, there was one time where I was at, we were playing at Bates and um, very intense game. They have a small gym, but it gets very crowded. So it's really loud. Um, and I was like taking the ball out and one of like the fans yelled like, you Jewish fuck behind me. But, like it wasn't like, no one was talking and like he yelled. It was like, you know, everyone's talking shit right. in the midst of the shit talking. And yeah, that's it. Have you ever experienced anti Semitism from your teammates? No. Or are they just curious, like, what the fuck are you, you know? No, I mean, I think I mean, I'm very close with all my teammates. I know, so. I love them. Yeah. It's like a family, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, you know, in my show, yes, I can say that, me, 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 me. Um, I talk about my bond with other comedians who I started out with. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's, they're like family forever. Before I get to, if I've ever embarrassed you, what is the mindset? Like you're, you're a captain mm-hmm. at Trinity. Not everyone gets to be a captain. When do you think at what age and how do you realize this is, you know, cause you have to be mature to be a team player, Right. I when I watched AAU games, I noticed a lot of the kids were just out for themselves to try to get recruited, um, and it wasn't a team thing. Like, when do you think you got to the point where you're like, "Yes, I want to do my best, and I have to be my best," but it's about the team, and I will give up for the team. Uh, I think, I mean, exactly what you said. Where in high school and AAU, the culture around getting recruited is so toxic and hard that winning doesn't just guarantee you you know a scholarship or a right. spot on a college team the same way if you're just good enough then you will be right, right. so you know you average 50 points and you know 10 rebounds a game in a you know at a shitty basketball school right you're still going to get recruited somewhere right. right but you know if you average 4 points per game on a really good team you might not go to the level that you want to go to right yeah so in AAU and high school there's everyone wants to be recruited so it's like and there's also so much social media around it now that it's like you want to be that person and that's why there's a lot more individual emphasis from people mm-hmm. whereas in college at least at division 3 level like a lot of people don't want to play not even want to play, don't aren't going to play after right. college, right? So at that point, it's like, one, if you're not winning, if you're pl- like, we play pickup, right? You could score every single point in pickup and your team loses every time. It's like, okay, congratulations. You know what I mean? Whereas on the court, it's like this year, for example, right? I, there were, I got injured for, Seven. Seven or eight games. It injured or you had mono? I got injured first. I got hit by my teammate. I had to go to the ER. So I right, got injured. But and I was out nasty. for three, three weeks. 
And um, but do you, don't you think if you didn't have mono, you wouldn't have been out that, that long? That has nothing to do Nasty. with anything I'm talking about. Please go to the mic. Um, I forgot. What I was oh, I'm sorry. You you said for instance, I was out. It's gone. Next question, please. What? I forgot. Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's okay. You were talking about AAU versus it's it's versus me versus team. Um, yeah. So like when you get, get to college, people aren't playing after college and you have to win to stay on the court. Right. So it's not just your individual ability anymore. You know what I mean? You score 20 points a game, but your team's losing versus you score, you know, 14 points a game, but your team's winning. One, you're going to stay on the court. Two, you're going to get more recognition because it's harder to score 14 on right. you know, the 22nd best team in the country than it is to score 20 on the the level of difficulty plays a higher factor in college. So winning is more important. Okay. To, to How success. you've been with numerous coaches throughout mm-hmm. your career. Numerous. Just na- not nice to me. So first of all, how important is the coach? Because if you don't like the coach, have you been on teams where you don't like the coach? Um, or don't agree with the coach or yes. And then how do you deal with that? Um, I don't know. Those are two not agreeing with the coach and not liking a coach. are Two Very different things. Okay. So let's start with not liking a coach. Well, not liking a coach. You don't have to like your coach to be successful. Right. You need to respect your coach to be successful. Right. That's, that's a good point. I don't know. I think that. There's just a lot of coaches have different, it's, it's, you know, when you go from one coach to another coach to another coach, you learn that every coach has a different philosophy and they've been doing it for so long. And if you're coaching at that level for as long as you've been, you have to have some sort of success that they follow. And as a player in their system, it's not your job to like this, I want to do this play. Right. Let's do this play. Let's do this play. Right. right. It's your system or, Hey coach, like I think we should run a, a zone defense. Right. Right. Now, right. Like that's not your job. Your job is to do what your coach tells you to, to the hot. To the so, best all right. Ability. So let's bring it to the next level. Your coach is brings you to the side and is like, okay, we're doing this play and you don't agree with it. Do you ever speak up? Uh, no, if I were to, it, no, I would never. That's no, not my job. It's so you're job. a small forward. Which means you're not I'm a small like a power forward center. It's a power forward center. Yeah, that's my baby. He's a power forward center. He's a power. All right. If the if the point guard is coming up the other end and is a, they call the play, the guy, the smaller guy with the ball who brings the, the point ball, guard. Yeah. point guard. I'm trying to do this for people who don't. Yeah. Do you ever, if they're going to call a play, do they ever check with you first, like while you're if you're well, coming up back court de- with them? It depends. Like if I'm. You know, if it's a, you know, the other team missed a shot, we get a rebound. We're just running up the court. First, we try to just score. The the first thing is just if you can, if someone's open up court or whatever, you just get it to them and score, right? Second option is then if it's fast, he's going to call out a play and everyone gets into position and you run it, right? Right. Let's say the other team makes a shot, right? I am inbounding the ball to my point guard and we're running up the court together. Yeah. If I just hit a shot or two. Then he'll ask me what I want to do. Oh, because, okay. You know, I, you know, I just scored, you know, five points, right? Right. You know, you feed the hot hand. That's right. Like you want to keep going to what's working right. until it doesn't work. Right. So then he would act like, you know, we have a bunch of plays that I could potentially get the ball. Right. Of, right. So then he asks me which one I prefer to run in that situation. He's like, you want anything? And I'll, sometimes I'll say yes. Sometimes I'll be like, you call it. Like, right. It depends on the context and what's going on. What does being a captain entail? Like, what are your extra responsibilities? Well, there were a decent amount of captains last year for our team. So yeah. there was different roles, I would say, from each captain. Um, also, I was a junior captain, and I think it was definitely a learning year for, mm-hmm. for from a leadership perspective. I don't know. I think, like, the basic things are, like, making sure everyone is at where they need to be on time and... Um, you know, if my coach has something that he wants us to te- me to text to the group chat or whatever, those are like the basic things. But then like the more like captainy things, which I'm really trying to work on for this year, this upcoming year is sort of holding people accountable and, you know, having people hold me accountable and being creating a culture where 
people are okay of being held accountable and want to be held accountable right. and people are okay calling others out when they aren't doing what they need to be. Right. Um, I think that's something that was really important and just sort of making sure that we have a group that is focused together, wants to win and does the work that needs to be done to win. Right. And I think also what's very important as a captain is, you know, I can't tell people what to do if I'm not doing it myself. Right. I can't tell someone to work hard if I'm jogging up the court because it's like, why would I listen yeah, to you? Not, yeah, you're not. Yeah. You're not an yourself. example. Yeah. So I think the first and ba- most basic thing a captain has to do is one, practice everything you preach and also work your hardest so that you can be that leadership role. Right. You can sort of implement a culture and this hardworking thing that you think. Um, right. Now, success. mental health and sports. Uh, Michael Phelps has really talked about it. It's definitely a topic that wasn't spoken about when I was a kid. And I think now it's it's getting more exposure exposure what kind of mental health advice would you give to a young kid who's has the desire to play college ball now now that you've been through so many iterations of you know uh, yeah. you know high school boarding mm-hmm. school maccabi game maccabi games um just you've been in so many different yeah. situations uh, and you're you're a psychology major correct yeah, yeah. that's what i heard What I would say is I think what happens a lot of times, especially at D3, um, is that people growing up really enjoy playing basketball and it's fun, right? It's a game. It's something they go to the park and do with their friends. Who took you to the park? Um, And I don't think what a lot of people Hmm. understand when they play college basketball is that or once you start getting even even boarding school, right? Right. It's for your coaches and for your athletic trainers and for your the uh, head of the athletic department. It's not fun. It's their job. Right. And they have to win to be successful and to further themselves in their career and whatever. Right. So, you know, even at boarding school is when or when you really start to want to get to the level where you can become a college basketball player and you can see that path. Um, is when it starts becoming a business. Even AAU is is a business. Oh, There's for sure. M- hundreds of millions of dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if billions of dollars that go into that every year. So I think my advice would be that you have to be prepared to not enjoy basketball and not... Um, that it's not always going to be the it's fun. Not always, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but um, it's not always being on a court with, you know, a couple hundred people watching and you hit a three and whatever, right? It's right. It's going to practice and lift when you're tired and you would rather be in your bed. And it's, you know, sacrifice it's being it's, you know, sprinting at the end of practice, even though you had you, two classes and you want to peel, you, know, you haven't had dinner yet and you want to go, you're going to dinner after. And, you know, it's, it's, if you really want to be successful and you want to have a, meaningful college career then you have to understand that you have to make sacrifices not even sacrifices is you have to be you have to understand that basketball is not always going to be fun right and that's not what basketball is when you get to the next level like i i promise you lebron james does not have fun every time he's working out right promise This week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone. I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give better help a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists 
And, you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you, do it. BetterHelp is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait. And then I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And BetterHelp is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today, and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. Have I, as your mother... Um, ever embarrassed you while you were playing? Um, um I wouldn't so. say while I was playing back to the point of like, I'm too locked in to worry about right. what's going on. But I would say, I mean, you're very loud. I can hear you screaming. Really? I mean, when I watch my film after games, I can hear you screaming from the camera that's in the top corner of the gym. But, um. Would you rather I just not say anything? No, but I, uh-huh. um. I remember the one time at Le Mans. Okay, fine. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. I don't even remember what happened. but They were they being were like, oh, so oh, mean oh, to oh. you. I had a bad game, and my number at the time was five. And someone from the crowd yelled, like, is that your number, your shooting percentage, right? And then they were- and these are, mind you, this is these are high school kids. And Judy's at the game. No, it wasn't only that. It wasn't only back and no, forth. No, I did not. I kids. didn't curse. And then gets kicked out of the gym. No, I did not curse. Hey, ben, that's not what happened. Side of the door. Okay, first of all, that's not what happened. They were taunting you and taunting you, that's and exactly I told them to shut up. And, and then they then came you over. Got kicked out of the gym. And then they can you get over? And they're like, you have to leave. I go wait. So they're. They're allowed they're, to talk. They are nasty. They're allowed, they're to, allowed to talk. They're allowed to taunt him. And I can't ask them to shut up. This, all, you know. Minors. People that were. I think it was. I had PTSD. I had PTSD from being bullied in school. Okay. Okay, and I never said so anything. Next time and next, I think I was. Uh, I was. Okay. I was doing what I way, wish I had done. Remember that these people. Took time out of their day to come see me play basketball, so they're not. They were on the other bullying. team. Okay. Yeah, they came out of. They took okay. Time out of their day to come see me play. Okay. Basketball. Also, at the game or at Williams, they were making up the most horrible taunts for everyone, and it's really not as. And I thought she's really dragging it right no, now. No, whatever. So. Um, Ben, That's who the best part of being it in the. I know. Games. I get the so people, into it. I just don't yelling. like the bullying. It's I don't not like bullying. That's. Can that's you get the, closer that's to the, the mic? The fun part of the thing is when they have a whole crowd of people who took time to look up, look you up, and find something out about you, and yet yell it on the court because you're playing well. It's like okay, fine, yeah, you know fine. I, mean? it's, I it's get the it. Best part. Okay, um, and yes, they can say that. Hey, now, exactly. um, Ben, favorite. Ben. Um, I want to ask you a personal question. Mm -hmm. How has having two to four moms, um, have you had to explain that over and over to your teammates? Has anyone ever been like, oh, my God, your parents are lesbians or. Well, I don't have any 47 year old teammates that are lesbian, so they wouldn't use the word lesby. But. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that called sarcasm? Okay. So. You have as a as a son of gays, lesbies, as I call them. You have to come out all the time, right? Because you have to tell people; they just assume you I have. Think coming out is a bit of an exaggeration. I'm not like. Well, you have to explain your family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, can you tell me some stories of? I mean, there's no. Like they're my teammates. They're like my friends. They're. You know, some of them are my brothers. They're very respectful of my life. And 
I think the only place where I really was like in shock about that sort of thing was Tulane, but it was more so because of Southern culture as opposed to like these individual people. Whereas like sometimes I would hear stuff in the locker room and I wouldn't even be offended. I would more so just be like astounded that these people actually believe these things and it's so ingrained in their thoughts and they were just taught it at birth. So like they, they have no way of, you know, unless you really, they really wanted to engage in like a deep, long conversation with you about it. Like there's no real way of like getting through to them or like, there's no point in being like, yo, that's offensive. Cause like they don't understand, like they're right. just not going to understand. Right. Um, but I don't know. My teammates are friendly and yeah. I, I didn't know think. that happened at Tulane. No, it's, it's not like you, it's you just like the, they'll say like faggot and stuff like that. Yeah. Or just like, I remember sometimes, sometimes some one person asked me like, I don't even remember who it was, but they were like saying something about how like, they're like, yo, like, Faggot doesn't offend you, right? Like, because it's like we're talking about men, not women. Oh my god! And I was like, like you don't even know what you're saying, right? Like, like whatever. I don't. No, oh. no, it doesn't. It doesn't affect me. Who taught? Who took you? to... Actually, you know what I think is really interesting is right. that, um, which I've started to think about recently, is that all of my teammates or the majority of my teammates, currently. Or a lot of my teammates in the past, too, have had sort of like a, their dad's always at their game, right? Right. And like their dads are always like, you know, their dads, some of them played basketball, but some right. of them didn't. And they think they're like, you got to do you got to do this. And then you should do this next game. Like, loved watching you tonight, blah, blah, blah. Where it's like you guys, now you understand because you've watched me for so long. But like, you, you don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Like you don't try to know what's going on when they do. And then you try, you don't try to be like, Oh, Oh, this is what coach is saying to them right now. Right. Blah, right. Blah, right. Where they're like, Oh, they need to do this right now. Blah, blah, which is like, that's what like, well, the they're living the vicariously that's what through I'm saying. their kids. Whereas you're just like watching the game. They're trying to like manipulate. Uh, yeah. Oh, you should sub in. You know, I've had parents of my team, male parents of my teammates be like before the game, like during the national anthem, be like, Ben, like, and it's like, like oh, pointing it's like, to yeah, their head, like, like you shut got, the fuck up. It's not, not your that. business. You guys just don't, eat. you as women who didn't grow up playing basketball the same way I'm sure these men did have a different, I don't know. And I've also thought about how uh, I think about if these fathers think about how that, right? About how, like, you know, I'm the captain and, uh, you know, I was the leading points per game on my team this year. And I wonder if they think, like, he did it with, you know, four moms. How did you know? Right. What did I do wrong or something like that? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, like, who took you to the park as a young boy? I think Mama did, right? No, she did not. She did. I did. I have a lot of memories. Oh my, my god, mama that too. is so mean. Who would have pop up softball games in in the middle of Central Park? Can you get closer, please? I think we went with Elisa. No, no. Yeah. That is so horrible. I did it. I did it, Ben. Ben, this was one of my favorite podcasts. I one really of? the fa- my favorite podcast. This also, favorite podcast. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um just because of your generation. I am really upset about the guns. I'm upset that kids aren't have to go Did you go through drills? You can yawn during my podcast. It's like, fine. Yeah, kind of, not really. Okay. Like blue drill or like red, but not like active shooter drill. Okay. What do you think about this? And do you think your generation will get gun control under control? Can you please? Um, No, I don't think we will. Why? Um, I don't know. I have conversations with people a lot. And one, I think there is a, a large, a larger group of people than in the past from my generation compared to others that care about this. But one, I think there's, you know, there's a bit the bigger group, but then there's always going to be the people that are opposed to it, right? Right. And there's always going to be the people that are too lazy to do anything. Right. So I don't know if there's a big enough population of people against it, even though it's more than in the past. But I think AR-15s still out, I are think, ridiculous. I'm not. No, I'm just saying, I'm you. saying gun control. Like, uh, no, we're not taking away your Second Amendment rights, but you don't need a fucking weapon. I agree, but I don't, you ask me what it's I not, think. Okay. I don't think that. Okay. I don't think there's enough of a population of people to outnumber the people who don't care enough and the people who are so pro-guns that 
And also like when you, when you see my generation is going to stop it, like what you see of my generation is like the Northeast and like whatever. Like you're No, not, I'm looking at the kids no, in but, Tennessee. No, I'm not saying that against right. you. I'm just saying we live in the Northeast. I like, know. We're a part of that culture more. Like I'm not, you know, I don't have videos of the South on like my Instagram feed and stuff. Like, right. I'm sure you just don't have as much exposure right. to that. And there's a lot of people down there that are very. I mean, we took you hunting. Guns. I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> he, he does a face like, all right. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, ben, um, I want to thank you for being no, a seriously. No, seriously. no, no, like seriously. No, I just seriously want to say, I love you more than anything in the whole world. You, Henry, and Elisa. Do you think you have a good sense of humor? Uh, yeah. And where do you think you got that from? Mama. Okay, I'm mommy, by the way, not mama, and um. Yeah, I don't appreciate that. Thank you for um, being on my podcast today. Thanks for having me. Um, I love you. Love you too. Oh, I love you so much. All right. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I was just going to ask Ben about the Angel Reese, and we got into this whole thing, and I really like it. I'm so, I'm so proud now. I just want to say before we we go, first of all, thank you all so much for listening um, to this week's very special episode of College Basketball Talk with with Benjamin Callahan Gold, mostly gold. And uh, Judy, that's not nice. And um, it is Passover. Are you keeping kosher for Passover? I am. Yay! Um, to, this is the last week of my show. Yes, I can say that. At 59E59. Really? Yeah. This is the last week coming up. That's quick. Yeah. And so it's selling out, and I got a really good review in the New York Times. It was all right. Nasty. And uh, hopefully we're going to take it on the road, people, because I think people need to see this. This podcast is produced by Laura Vogel, even though I really produced this one. I mean, I did it all myself. Okay. It's edited by Colin Schmeling, and not, it wouldn't nothing would be possible without Brittany Soward's Richmond. So we have to do that because she married a Jew. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, even though I'm not into TikTok now uh, because of the China at Judy Gold J E W D Y G O L D because I'm a Jew. Ben, where can people find you? Just Instagram. At- Ben Callahan Gold. B E N C A L L A H A N D A S. No, not no dash. C A L L A H A N G O L D. But the gold is in caps, right? It doesn't work like that on Instagram. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, all right. Fantastic mother. Thank you, son. I really love you. And um, as we always say. Oh fuck! What fell? All right. Wait, no, I have to. This is what I always say. So long. Go, 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 go.